Okay, we have already seen some distributions that will collapse to uh, each other. So one example was the binomial. We saw it uh, that when n becomes very large and the parameter p becomes very small, uh, that the binomial becomes a Poisson distribution. Uh, today we're going to see that some distributions under certain conditions will collapse to a Gaussian form. Uh, and the first one, again, is a binomial distribution that we'll work with. Okay, so if we start with a discrete random variable, uh, that is x, and it's a binomial random variable, uh, we're going to assume that we have n trials and a Bernoulli parameter p, and a mean in p that is greater than 5, uh, with a variance that's given by this. Uh, so this is the standard binomial formula. Sigma squared is n p times 1 minus p. Uh, so, so if both the mean... Uh, or if the np uh, is greater than 5 and the n times the 1 minus p is greater than 5, then we can define the, the uh, standard normal variable z as x minus np, uh, which, is, which is our mean, right? And then divide by the standard deviation. And uh, we see that this z becomes approximately standard normal. Okay, now x is a uh, discrete variable and z is continuous. Uh, so, because of that, you know, it's not really quite clear uh, where we should stop integrating to uh, define probabilities along the continuous axis. Uh, what we usually use is a continuity correction, which is just basically uh, going halfway between the, the uh, discrete uh, values that you're cutting off. So, if we say that the discrete value has to be less than x, uh, that would be the same as saying that the discrete value uh, is less than x plus 0.5 because there's no discrete numbers between x and x plus 0.5. So now what we can do is integrate our continuous variable up to z that corresponds to x plus 0.5 and that's what's happening here in this formula. So this is called a continuity correction and uh, we just use it when we take a uh, limit as a continuous variable as a discrete variable becomes continuous. Now by the same argument uh, saying that x has to be greater than or equal to some specific value is the same on the discrete axis as saying that x has to be greater than x minus a half. Uh, so now um, we can integrate uh, z beyond x minus 0.5 uh, in, that, in that formula for z. Okay, so that is uh, this idea of using a continuity correction uh, to, to describe a... Um, a binomial distribution in this case where you have uh, a lot of expected successes and you have um, a uh, uh, few expected failures. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about another uh, example. Um, so we'll do a little example of taking the, the binomial to a Gaussian. So if we have 50 bits and they're transmitted with an error probability of 0.1 for each bit, then the exact probability that two or less errors occur, uh, we know how to estimate the, the expected uh, number, uh, is, is uh, 50 times 0.1. Uh, so we're right at the edge of, we have np equals 5, which is right at the edge of being allowed to use a Gaussian to estimate my uh, my probabilities here. So the, the discrete formula uh, would be to plug this into the binomial, right? So if we want um, two or less errors, then we can have zero errors, we can have one error, or we can have two errors. These are the corresponding terms in the binomial. We have our binomial coefficients, 50 choose 0, 50 choose 1, and 50 choose 2. We have 0 0.9, that's the probability that the bit is transmitted successfully. Uh, and we have um, 0 0.1 is the probability of an error. Uh, to the 0, to the 1, and to the 2, and of course the successful trans, uh, transfers are fit to the power 50, to the power 49, and to the power 48. So adding up these terms gives us 0 .0, 0 0.112 uh, for the total probability, and that came from the binomial distribution. It is exact, this answer. Okay, so, but because we have uh, 50 times 0 0.1 equals 5, which is our value for np, and we also have uh, n times 1 minus p is 45. Uh, so, so this is now uh, something that we can approximate as a Gaussian approximation. Now, now notice uh, the way this works, right? So we're basically saying that the expected number of successes and the expected number of failures 
have to be, uh, in this case it's the opposite. These, these are failed transfers and, and successful transfers. Uh, but both of them have to be offset from the, the, uh, the absolute zero or n uh, by five, right? So uh, all of them transmitted successfully uh, would be n equals zero and all of them transmitted unsuccessfully would be 50 and those numbers set boundaries on the total of the of the binomial distribution and here we're saying uh, that in order to use a Gaussian to approximate this uh, the NP must be somewhere in the middle of that and therefore the N times 1 minus P must also be somewhere in the middle of that. If if N minus P was right up to the other edge then my Gaussian distribution would have tails that would hang over uh, beyond the um, beyond the boundary of the possible outcomes. And that's no good, right? We don't want to do that. And then we would be cutting off those probabilities and making this approximation that our binomial looks like a Gaussian. Okay, so if you, um, if you want, I encourage you to draw some pictures and try and put a Gaussian with a reasonable variance uh, at the very edge of your uh, binomial range and you'll see that the tails stick beyond the range of that binomial variable. Okay, enough of my talking about this. Uh, let's go on and, and since we satisfy the rules, let's go on and use the Gaussian approximation and see what we get. Uh, so we have uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is the same as the probability that my, my Gaussian random variable, uh, when we approximate this with a Gaussian, is going to say that x has to be less than or equal to 2.5. So that's my continuity correction. I'm putting in the extra half unit here. Now I convert this to a standard normal variable, so I have z uh, is less than 2.5 minus the, the mean uh, divided by the standard deviation. And that gives me that the, I'm asking really for the probability that z uh, is less than minus 1.18, uh, which has a probability 0 0.119. Okay, so here we got 0 0.119, and up here we got 0.112. Okay, so the Gaussian and the binomial in this case are in reasonable agreement. Uh, there's a little bit of error because again, we're right at the edge of being allowed to cut off these Gaussian tails that stick beyond the range of the binomial uh, variable. Okay, so another one that will transform into a uh, Gaussian distribution. Uh, is the Poisson distribution. Okay, so you kind of expected that, right? So we already saw that when n becomes large and p becomes very small, uh, that we could make a binomial, a Poisson. And we just showed that as long as np is equal to 5, that the binomial becomes a Gaussian. So it stands to reason that we can make a Poisson a Gaussian under certain circumstances. And uh, it, when, the, when the binomial uh, mean was greater than 5, we transformed that into a Gaussian. And here, you're seeing that when the Poisson mean is greater than 5, we're going to be able to transfer the Poisson into a Gaussian. Okay, so we only have to specify the mean here. Uh, the standard deviation is always the mean for the, uh, or sorry, the um, variance is always the mean for the Poisson distribution. Okay, so uh, so this is the uh, the standard normal variable. So we take our Poisson distribution, our Poisson parameter, our Poisson random variable x, and we convert it into a Gaussian standard normal. Uh, that is z uh, is x minus lambda uh, divided by the square root of lambda is my standard deviation, right? So uh, this variable is also approximately standard normal. We can do a, a little example. Uh, the number of asbestos particles per meter squared on a surface follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 1,000. Okay, so that's a pretty pretty large number uh, to have to count. Uh, but what is the probability that 950 part asbestos particles or fewer are found? Okay, so obviously we would not want to go through and add the probability that you would find zero, the probability that you'd find one, the probability that you'd find two, probability that you'd find three, et cetera, et cetera. We would prefer to be able to convert this to a continuous scale and just integrate from zero up to 950. Uh, that would be a lot easier, right? And this, uh, this uh, guideline here says that indeed we can do that. Uh, so we want the discrete probability that this discrete variable x is less than or equal to 950. We could, again, go through and do that uh, by completing this summation, uh, but it would be pretty tedious. And instead, what we're going to do is to uh, 
um, is to integrate uh, the standard Gaussian normal variable up to the point where we have 950 minus 1,000 over the square root of 1,000. And uh, that is just asking where the standard, what is the probability that the standard normal is less than or equal to uh, minus 1.58. Okay, so that probability is 0 0.057. And, uh, and that's uh, it for those problems. Um, as you can see, this is the part of the course where I usually schedule a midterm. And so we will stop and talk about that.